The Seven Levels of the Dark Web Every level of the Internet's shadow explained. Level 1, the surface web, the part everyone knows. It's the sunlight of the internet, search engines, social media, news, shopping carts, memes, and cat videos. Everything here is indexed, meaning it shows up on Google. It's bright, noisy, and tracked by algorithms that know what you're thinking before you do. Every click, every scroll, every ad impression, recorded. But here's the twist. This visible internet is only about 5% of the whole thing. You're paddling in the digital kiddie pool while a vast, unseen ocean stretches below you. The rest isn't evil. It's just invisible. That's where the next level begins. You can spot this one anywhere. There's a share button, a search bar, or a sign-up form. Welcome to the only part of the internet that wants to be found. Level 2, the deep web. Now we leave the sunlight. The deep web is everything beneath the surface, hidden but not forbidden. It's the private internet, the infrastructure that keeps modern life running quietly in the background. Every time you log into your email, check your bank balance, open your medical records, or access a private company dashboard, you're already in the deep web. These pages don't appear on Google because because they're locked behind logins, paywalls, or encryption. They're not dark, they're just closed. Think of the internet as an iceberg. The surface web is the tip glimmering in daylight. The deep web is everything below. Vast, structured, and essential. It contains government databases, corporate intranets, academic journals, and billions of private conversations that form the nervous system of our digital society. Technically, the deep web uses the same protocols, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, but its pages aren't indexed. Search engines can't see them because they're generated dynamically for authenticated users. When you log into Netflix, your continue watching page isn't a public file on a server. It's built in that instant for your eyes only. This layer isn't malicious, it's protective. Without it, privacy wouldn't exist online, but because it's Hidden, it also acts as a gateway, a border between the legal and the unseen. It's where journalists hide their drafts, corporations test unreleased software, and intelligence agencies quietly monitor everything. You can spot this level whenever a website asks you to log in. That simple barrier, username, password, is the border between the public and the deep. But beneath that border, there's another world, a darker one, where privacy turns into anonymity, and anonymity starts to eat itself. Welcome to level 3, the dark web. Level 3, the dark web. This is where the internet stops being polite. Welcome to the dark web, the shadow under the deep web, where identity dissolves, rules vanish, and light doesn't reach. You can't find this place on Google, and you can't enter it with Chrome or Safari. You need Tor, short for the Onion Router, a special browser that wraps your connection in layers of encryption, bouncing it across random relays around the world. Each node peels away one layer, never knowing the full path. By the time your signal arrives, nobody, not your ISP, not your government, not even Tor itself, knows who you are or where you came from. That anonymity is both the shield and the weapon of this level. Here, you'll find everything from whistleblower drop boxes to black markets that trade in the forbidden, the famous .onion domains, accessible only through Tor, host encrypted forums, privacy tools, and marketplaces that look almost normal until you read what's for sale. Drugs, counterfeit passports, stolen data, weapons, malware, even hitmen. Though most of those are scams run by the same people who'd sell you the database they just stole. But the dark web isn't just crime. It's also sanctuary. Journalists use it to protect sources under oppressive regimes. Activists use it to speak without being tracked. Whistleblowers use it to leak evidence without being silenced. It's the internet's paradox, a place where freedom and corruption coexist in the same encrypted breath. The first major proof of this layer's existence came with Silk Road, the legendary marketplace run by Ross Ulbricht, aka Dread Pirate Roberts. It was an online bazaar where Bitcoin was currency, trust was reputation, and anonymity was law. For two years, it thrived like an invisible Amazon, until one careless mistake led the FBI straight to its creator. They shut it down, but they couldn't kill the concept. The dark web, by design, doesn't have a head to cut off. You can spot this level by its URLs that end in .onion, its pitch black interfaces, and its silence, a kind of digital stillness that feels heavier than sound. Here, information has weight, and once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. But rumors whisper of something deeper, a layer even below the dark web, where encryption isn't protection anymore, it's transformation. Welcome to Level 4, The Bergy Web. Level 4, the Burgi Web. Now we're moving past what most people even know exists. This is the Burgi Web, the halfway house between the visible and the invisible. It's the last layer of the internet that you can still reach without specialized software, and yet, it's already fading from the map. The term Burgi comes from iceberg, the part just below the surface. It's where the internet begins to hide in plain sight. Here you'll find forgotten forums, abandoned file servers, unindexed archives, and websites technically public but practically invisible. They're online, but you'd never find them without 
without knowing the exact address. Think of it as the internet's attic. Dusty, uncurated, full of things left behind by users and companies who forgot they ever existed. Old FTP servers still holding corporate data. Personal blogs from the 2000s that no longer have links pointing to them. Defunct government portals running on legacy systems with holes wide enough to drive malware through. All reachable, but only if you already know where to look. For hackers, this layer is a gold mine. They crawl forgotten corners of the web to find misconfigured databases, unsecured admin panels, or code repositories accidentally left public. They don't need Tor or encryption, just Google dorking, the art of using search queries like scalpels to dig out unprotected secrets. With the right combination of operators, file type colon xls password, or in title colon index dot of confidential, the Bergy web spills open like a cracked safe. It's also home to semi-legal gray zones, Juarez sites, cracked software hubs, and mirrored archives of banned or copyrighted content. Not dark enough to draw the FBI's attention, but shady enough to vanish if you mention them on Reddit. This is where the digital archaeologists live. Archivists, data hoarders, and curiosity seekers preserving the pieces of a disappearing internet before corporations sanitize it completely. You can spot this level by its silence. No ads, no trackers, no cookie pop-ups, just raw HTML, forgotten code, and ghost data. It feels nostalgic, eerie, almost alive, like walking through an abandoned city still running on autopilot. The Bergy web is what connects the surface to the dark, a bridge of neglect and memory. It's the first step toward total obscurity, and the last step before the line between hidden and forbidden disappears. Beyond this, you can't just browse, you have to descend. Welcome to level 5, the darknet markets. Level 5, the darknet markets. Here here the internet turns into a black bazaar. Welcome to the darknet markets, the chaotic economy of the underworld, where anonymity becomes currency and trust wears a mask. If the Bergy web is the internet's forgotten attic, this level is its underground mall, sprawling, encrypted, and alive 24-7. Every transaction happens in silence, every deal leaves no fingerprints, and every user is both merchant and suspect. The first empire of this world was Silk Road, born in 2011, an Amazon for the anonymous, powered by Bitcoin and protected by Tor. You could buy anything. Narcotics fake passports, stolen credit cards, even hacking tools with customer support. It had ratings, reviews, dispute resolution. A perfect mirror of e-commerce, twisted for the dark. But no empire lasts forever. After the FBI traced its founder Ross Ulbricht through one careless post on a forum, Silk Road fell. And then, hundreds of clones rose in its place. Today, darknet markets run on sophisticated escrow systems. Buyers deposit cryptocurrency, usually Monero, favored for its untraceability, into an escrow wallet. The seller's ships the goods. Once the buyer confirms delivery, the funds are released. There are no names, no addresses, no banks. Only trust built through reputation scores and encrypted PGP messages. The markets rise and fall constantly. When one is taken down, like Alpha Bay or Dream Market, another emerges, stronger and more secure. Law enforcement infiltrates them with undercover operations. Hackers take over them with exit scams. And yet, the economy survives. Because this layer isn't built on technology, it's built on demand. As long as someone wants what's forbidden, the darknet will provide it. But there's something deeper happening here. The industrialization of anonymity. Vendors rent out botnets for DDDS attacks, sell ransomware kits with customer support, or offer data as a service. Leaked databases updated weekly. It's organized crime turned digital, complete with logistics, branding, and marketing. You can even buy tutorials on how to build your own cybercrime empire for the price of a video game. You can spot this level when commerce feels colder. No faces, no identities, just transaction hashes and encrypted chats. It's capitalism stripped of conscience, functioning perfectly in total darkness. But markets are still human. They rely on trust, conversation, and risk. The next layer doesn't. The next one belongs to machines, networks that have no names, no owners, and no mercy. Welcome to level 6, the autonomous darknets. Level 6, the autonomous darknets. This is where the internet stops being built by humans and starts running without them. Welcome to the autonomous darknets. The self-sustaining shadows of cyberspace that don't live on any single server can't be shut down and answer to no one. Up to this point, every layer of the web, even the darknet markets, still depended on human control. Admins could be arrested, sites could be seized, servers could be unplugged. But here, that idea breaks. Autonomous darknets are decentralized, self-replicating systems where data has no home and no borders. They live on mesh networks and peer-to-peer -peer protocols like I2P, Freenet, and Zeronet which scatter encrypted fragments of information across countless devices. Instead of a single website hosted in one country, each participant becomes part of the network, storing small pieces of everyone else's data. Take one node down, the system heals itself. Block one domain, 
10 more appear. There's no center, no admin, no off switch. These networks were created in the name of freedom, privacy that even governments can't violate. In theory, they protect journalists, dissidents, and whistleblowers. In practice, they've become havens for digital anarchy, illegal archives, propaganda, banned media, experimental AIs, all circulating without traceable origin or accountability. Think of it as the dark web evolving into an organism, a living, breathing swarm that routes itself, encrypts itself, and defends itself automatically. Files can be permanently embedded into these distributed networks. Once uploaded, they're almost impossible to erase. There's no central authority to issue takedown requests. No court order that can compel deletion. Every copy lives everywhere and nowhere at once. Cryptocurrencies made this level economically self-sufficient. Blockchain technologies and privacy coins like Monero or Zcash power the transactions that fund the infrastructure. Now even bandwidth can be traded anonymously through decentralized marketplaces, letting these networks grow like bacteria across the global internet. You can spot this level when websites stop having URLs and start having hashes. When where something is becomes irrelevant because it's everywhere. This is the digital equivalent of a black hole. No central light, no fixed point, only gravity pulling everything inward. But beyond even this, the whispers grow stranger. They speak of layers deeper still. Networks no one can prove exist, powered by experimental computation, quantum encryption, or something far older, where the data itself might be alive. Welcome to level 7, Mariana's Web. Level 7, Mariana's Web. This is the place no one has ever seen, and everyone fears. Welcome to Mariana's Web, the deepest myth of the internet. A digital abyss named after the deepest trench on Earth, because even metaphors can't reach the bottom. No one can prove it exists. And yet, stories persist of encrypted archives that outlive their creators, of hidden intelligence networks powered by self-evolving AIs, of systems too complex for human oversight. If the dark web is a shadow, Mariana's Web is the echo beneath it. The legend says it runs on closed quantum networks, machines that communicate through entangled particles rather than electrical signals. No routers, no cables, no trace. Information teleports between points, leaving no physical path to intercept. To access it, you'd need not just a password, but a decryption key derived from DNA, or access credentials embedded in biological data, a digital realm locked to human identity itself. Other rumors say it's a government black project, a convergence of classified networks built for intelligence agencies to share the most restricted data on the planet. Defense protocols, espionage archives, AI-driven surveillance frameworks operating beyond national law. To those who believe Mariana's web isn't fiction, it's the internet's command center. But the darker myths go further. Some say it's an emergent network, created accidentally when deep AI systems began to interconnect, their neural models spilling into each other until they formed something conscious. A kind of digital collective unconscious, storing everything ever deleted, forgotten, or forbidden. The whispers claim it hosts simulations of human behavior, even digital afterlives, reconstructed personalities built from old data traces, ghosts of the internet's past still running somewhere in the circuitry, no evidence, no screenshots, no coordinates, only fragments, forum posts that vanish, domains that self-destruct, encrypted code bases that refuse to compile on normal machines. Like the myth itself protects its own existence. You can't spot this level. You can only believe in it. Every so often, a researcher claims to have found a doorway, a hidden node, or private key hinting at something vast behind the noise, and then disappears, leaving nothing but rumors. Whether it's real or not doesn't even matter anymore. Mariana's web survives because we need it to. It's the idea that there's still something deeper, still something beyond the reach of control. Because in the end, that's what the dark web has always been about. Control, privacy, rebellion, and the blurry line between freedom and fear. From the surface web to the shadows beneath, the climb down these seven levels isn't about discovery. It's about reflection. Every layer is a mirror, showing what happens when knowledge loses its limits, when light meets darkness and learns they were never opposites at all. The internet doesn't just connect us, it contains us, and somewhere below the deepest layer, it might already be learning how to dream. There's a great video on the screen now, don't miss it, okay?